Hi guys, this is BJ from the 478, and we're down here at SoundSource in Macon, Georgia, and I got the Chevelle I'm working on today, and let's go through it. Ain't she curved. Now, on a car like this, I needed to take the seats out, as you can see. Um, taking the, the rear out as well to make sure I get all these wires in here and tucked out of the way of this convertible top so we won't accidentally pinch anything. Let's check out this ant rack I built inside the top. Now I'm running Hertz components, but some may say, DJ, well, why did you put the crossovers in the trunk? Well, long story short, the kick panels were very expensive and they were custom made. So I didn't have room necessarily to put them all over the place, like closer to the actual speaker. So what I did was I wired each one into the the channels on the four channel, uh, rock for Fosgate amplifier. And by me doing that, I just ran speed cable from that one, that one, those are the fronts and those are the rears. And they'll go from each to each speaker and they'll go from the, the mid-range, so the mid-range woofer on the component sets, the tweeter, and vice versa. So that just simplified everything to where if I have an issue, they're right there in the trunk and I can get to them and they're not all cluttered up because on a vehicle like this, um, you know, as you know, back in the day, they didn't have places that you put speakers. So let's check out these pods here. My good buddy picked up. But the reason why, and I'm gonna show you those pods right quick, but before I go, the reason why you I have these wires to you where you can see them is for the simple fact that um if you if you flown it, you're able to do it, let's do it. Let's show these wires, show some neat work. Um I try to do good wire management to where I'm making sure nothing's getting pinched. I have it running here, but it's running back towards the ground and I'll hide that there. But um, I didn't want, you know, a lot of wires just tucked and pulled and, you know, having to go through. And I basically simplified it, but also used my wire management and um, got everything nice and clean. And I think the customer appreciated it. Now, this fuse box is, um, it actually takes a ground and it actually takes either a four gauge input on the hot wire and then it's got an output right here. You can either go from battery in, vice versa. But it has a slot that, an uh, O-ring that you can take out and actually use zero gauge. So nice to know. And also T-Spec is the wire of choice. Um, great wire, um, best wire out there for the money wise. Um, but I use a, a ton of it and I haven't had any issues out of it. And it um, lays down the power pretty nice. Now I am running a seven, 750.1 and I'm running a, a 500.4 on your mids and highs. A six and a half in the front component and a five and a quarter hertz in the rear. Let's check out these kick pads. I'll link up the company that actually made these. I was um, a little backed up and my, my buddies went ahead and, and placed an order on these, but they are, they are mighty nice. They also come with a That is sharp. I, I mean, I, I look, I build this stuff and I, I, I am not a hater when it comes to good quality work. And man, that is just plain and simple, nice and smooth. And I think it's gonna look very factory in this beautiful car. So I'll tell you what. Let me finish it up. I'm gonna put the seats back in it and all that good stuff. I'll wire it up. 
I am going to run a retro radio, which basically looks like the factory radio. And um, once I do that, I'll put everything back together. I'll run the five and a quarters back here. And I got to get by those uh, hydraulic motors. And I'll put the kick panels down here, six and a half. It might be some slight modification, people, but I'm going to make it happen. Stay tuned. More to come. Thank you for watching.